Um, okay, so um, I mean, you know, obviously a lot more could be said about this, um, but uh, I just I'm trying to show you the motivation that uh, leads me to say we should think um, human beings, uh, generations, uh, generational time, and uh, and justice. We should think these together. We should. Uh, maybe rethink what it is to be a human being such that uh, these kinds of approaches are um, avoided. Uh, maybe, you know, at a later stage of theory development, you still want to abstract for certain purposes from overlap, right? Because you want to, maybe, um, it depends on where your theory goes, but it may be that for certain purposes you still want to do it, but with the proviso and with the caution that um, <clears throat> you have rethought the human being in such a way that you have considered the role of generational time um, for human beings. Um, so um, so my, my, my worry is just that um, you, you fall into what I call a presentist conception of the self. Presentist, it lives in the present. It is only contemporary. And uh, relations to other generations, to the past and to the future, are not essential to it. Um, and against that, and here are some you know, reasons for, for thinking that, where you can elaborate that, uh, and where this has already become an issue in the literature. Um, so for example, in the uh, so-called liberal communitarian debate, um, and there is some, there's some literature, um, especially uh, Afna de Shalit, an Israeli author, and Jenna Thompson, um, an Australian author, who have developed communitarian uh, critiques of um, uh, uh, the, the assumptions that I just uh, outlined, although they, they take them in a different direction than, than I do. Um, so uh, maybe that is familiar to you. I can't go into this debate uh, for, for reasons of time. Maybe you know a little bit uh, the work of the Canadian uh, political theorist, uh, C.B. McPherson, who has argued that European modernity is governed by and driven by the conception of a self that has no obligations to anyone. It starts with a, uh, with a human being that owns himself and thereby extends ownership from himself to, um, uh, to um, uh, nature and its resources and so on. I mean, the model there, or very well-known model there, is, is John Locke, uh, The Second Treatise of Government, uh, but also other um, authors for C.B. McPherson, this, this is, a, is a charge, this charge of possessive individualism applies to um, all social contract theories of the modern tradition. So it would include Hobbes and uh, Rousseau uh, and, and Rawls uh, as well. Um, so that there's a kind of individualism that is in particular, uh, uh, it's possessive. So it's, it's geared towards possession of territory and resources. Um, and uh, you can also connect this to certain uh, texts uh, of uh, Heidegger and the French reception of Heidegger uh, where um, the, there is a uh, diagnosis of the metaphysics of uh, presence uh, that ties in well with what I call presentism here where um, uh, uh, there is an account of the history of uh, uh, Western philosophy um, that privileges the present over the past and the future. Uh, and in particular, in the age of subjectivity, you could say, um, uh, such, a, um, uh, such a, a privileging takes the form of a kind of uh, possessiveness. Um, so there are um, other kinds of accounts that you can sort of plug in here. Um, we don't have the time, or I don't want to go into that into great detail. Um, but what I do want to do now um, is to say that what's crucial is uh, in responding to this present, what I call the presentist conception of the self, uh, is to uh, rethink um, selfhood and uh, human agency in such a way as to explore um, generational time. Um, and by generational time, I mean what I also call the time of birth and death. So the significance of birth, which links us to 
previous generations and death, which links us to future generations. So let us see whether we can really abstract from birth and death, or whether birth and death are not central to, um, to human agency and therefore to, uh, to justice. And you can see where this is going. Of course, my argument is going to be birth and death. The time of birth and death is central to uh, a conception of moral subjectivity, such that uh, justice is always, from the beginning, also intergenerational. That is, the, that is where this is going. Now, how can you make this claim?